Lovely weather we're having here today in Canada for December. Oh, it's not December. It's the middle of April. Welcome to our world. Good morning, everybody. It's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and welcome to my weekly vlog for week uh, starting on Monday, April the 20th, 2020. I had a look at the date. This you know, isolation thing, like it, one day melts right into the other, right? I thought it was bad being retired for that kind of thing, but it's even worse when you're in isolation. But anyways, it is the 39th day of my isolation, and this is vlog number 164 for Monday, April 20th, 2020, as I said before. Okay, so you saw in the little teaser, we had snow. I took that video uh, yesterday, Saturday. Again, days are melting together. One or two days ago, and we had this little snow squall. Now, it didn't stay. We It just melted as soon as it hit. But it is the second half of April, and we are still getting some snow. Welcome to Canada. Okay, so what have I been up to? Well, you can see my latest project. It's called the Jagged X Quilt. This was a pattern, a free pattern on Jordan Fabrics. And um, I made it from scraps, basically. Um, actually, a, a scrap jelly roll, uh, which was mostly batiks. And um, at first when I was working on this, I wasn't that impressed. I didn't like my color choices. But now that I have it finished, it's really grown on me. Um, I actually quite like it. And originally, all these brown pieces you see in here, which we call background, were going to be white. Um, that's sort of my go-to when it comes to backgrounds. And I thought, no, 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 let's think outside of the box. So I had a lot of that fabric sitting around and I didn't know what I was ever going to use it for. So I used it for this. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with it. And the border is a pieced border, as you can see, um, kind of a checkerboard style. And uh, I have mitered border, borders on it. They go out this way on the corners, which um, I've done another quilt before like that. And I really liked it, but I hadn't done it in a while. And I couldn't remember exactly how to do it, but um, I figured it out and it turned out pretty nice. Um, so now I've got to layer it and get it quilted. And um, yeah, so I've got a lot of quilts to quilt now. I think this is quilt number six that needs to be quilted. So this week I've got to really sit down and I notice there's a shadow on me. That's because the light is streaming in from my windows over here. Sorry about that. Um, I need to sit down and work up a plan for getting my quilts done. I'm doing the quilting. Um, you know, I have a philosophy about that. I really don't like to send my quilt out to somebody else to quilt it because I don't, I feel then it's not really totally my quilt. So I will struggle through with doing it on my domestic machine, but you know I have some tricks for that. So when I get that done, which will take me a while, I'll show you how it looks then. Hopefully it'll work out okay. All right. So um, the other thing I've been making is, well, let me just slow down here for a minute and talk about my sewing machine. Now you know that I had put, sent my sewing machine, my main sewing machine, which does the embroidery, out for repair because stupid me, I busted it. Well, I had no idea how long it was going to take. It didn't take long. I got it back within a week, which was really great. And it wasn't really a major problem in fixing it, I guess. Um, what I was told was when they opened up the arm of the embroidery unit inside, a part that I can't get at, although I want to learn how to get at that, uh, they found a whole bunch of thread and a pin wrapped around the belt, I guess. That runs one of the little thingies that goes up and down. Technical term, little thingies, yeah. Anyways, I do try to keep that very clean, but just a word of, of warning to me, be very, very careful with pins and things like that. I'm not sure how the pin got in there, but it must have been one probably sticking in one of my quilts that I didn't get around to taking out or hadn't seen. And it got in there and that's all that it took. So I'm waiting to find out how much that little repair is going to cost me because when I went to pick up the machine and we're doing all the curbside distancing the whole bit, um, she couldn't find the invoice. It was on her desk somewhere. 
if you've ever seen this lady's desk, you'd know why she can't find it. Um, piled pretty high. Um, so she said she'd call me. Well, that was on Friday. This is Monday. I haven't heard from her yet. I did send an email. I still haven't heard from her yet. And um, like, I'd like to get this off my back kind of a thing. Like, I like to pay my bills up front very quickly. In fact, with something we talked about yesterday in Stephen and Walter, that's maybe a philosophy I shouldn't have. But I'm going to say a little bit more about that later on, a little teaser here for you. So anyways, I got my machine back. It's running like a charm. I'm so glad to have it back. I'm going to be very careful with it. And now I can get back to quilting things like this. Okay, so the other things that I was making then, because now I have the embroidery machine, are face masks. Now, I had made face masks before uh, in a very standard way. But these face masks, masks, besides the fact that I'm using some wild colors of um, fabric here, are all done in the hoop on my embroidery machine. They take me about 20 minutes to knock one of these suckers off. And uh, they're great. So I'll just model it for you. Probably won't be able to hear me very well. Get my big ears in it. There you go. They fit very snug, no gaps. And it's got the pleats and everything so you can pull it up as high as you want. I can go in and rob a bank now. So there you go. So I made a bunch of these on the weekend. And uh, they are a double layer of cotton fabric and apparently the cotton, I was reading something, how true it is, I'm not sure, but uh, I read somewhere that quilting cotton is fairly dense and is good for masks because it will filter out about 75%, 70-75% of airborne particles and things like that. Now, how effective that is against the COVID virus, they're microscopic. This is not a medical grade mask, but this is great for people who are going to the grocery store, somebody who might have developed a cough of some sort, not necessarily a COVID cough, but you know, that kind of thing. And just for your own safety, for your own uh, mindset, you know, this would be good. Plus, you know, it's fun colors. So I made a bunch of these on the weekend. And as I said, they only take about 20 minutes to make. And uh, so we contacted the neighbors next door to us to see if they wanted some face masks. And they said they'd take a couple. So we bagged them up. I put them in, um, here's an example. I bag them up individually into Ziploc bags. And um, we put them in another big bag, a grocery bag, and hung it on the handle of their door, rang their doorbell, and ran away. <laughs> it was like playing Nicky Nicky Nine Doors. And then the neighbor next door to them, she's a, uh, an older lady. She lives on her own. She lost her husband a couple of years ago. Um, so we made one, left one with a note on it for her as well. And what I'm thinking now of doing is maybe, since we go out for a walk in our neighborhood, maybe I'll make up a bunch more of these and uh, put them in bags and maybe, you know, put a couple in a shopping bag and as we're walking around in our neighborhood I'll just go up to random doors and hang them on their doorknob. May I put a little note in to tell them who made them so they don't think it's you know somebody trying to trick them into something and uh, yeah you know just share them out things like that. I was thinking of offering them to people on my Facebook page and YouTube channel. Problem is how do you get them to people and um, you know you can mail them but probably something like this probably costs more than a standard stamp. And in this country, a standard stamp's a buck. Uh, and there's no guarantee how soon people would get them in the mail. So I don't know about that. Um, we'll see. But anyways, I can just spread them around my own neighborhood, I guess. I think. We'll see if that comes to fruition. But anyways, yeah, I got my sewing machine back and I'm very, very happy. Okay, so moving on. Another thing that's going to make you happy is this particular YouTube channel. I am absolutely in love with the people who put this up. They're a family. They, I first caught them by accident doing some parodies about the COVID virus and that kind of stuff, which were hilarious. Um, but they have all kinds of other videos that they had done way before we had the crisis, and they're still making them. And they're just, they're, they're funny, they're well thought, thought out, they're very well 
uh, record it as well. I think, I don't know what the one guy, the husband in this family group, what he does for a living, but I have a feeling he must have something to do with music or production because these are very, very professional. But believe me, I guarantee it, you're going to have a laugh. It's, you know, I, I've sat down and I have watched hours of their videos. Um, it's like watching a great television show. So check it out. They're called the Holderness family. Do you need a good laugh during this very stressful time we're going through right now? Then I suggest you check out the YouTube channel of the week called The Holderness Family Sings. This is a great uh, set of musical videos that are parodies on the whole crisis and, and other things uh, that we're going through right now. Um, they're very well done, they're very professional, and yet they are fun. And they have other channels as well that you may want to check out. I've been following these people recently and I'm loving every one of their videos that they put up. They just seem like a, a great family that you'd like to get to know and basically be friends with. So if you want something lighthearted, if you want something that's going to put a smile on your face, then check out Holderness Family Sings. So the link is in the show notes below. The link to Stephen and Walter Live is in the show notes below. And in the show, show, notes, show notes below, rented lips, um, you will find this week's book, which we'll come to in a moment. Um, just to back up a little bit on Stephen and Walter Live, we did get into talking about our situation with the River Cruise Company. company. It's ongoing. Um, I'm going to reference it again today in my rant in a couple of minutes but I'm not going to get into as many details about it because we kind of talked extensively about it in yesterday's Stephen and Walter Live so if you want to hear about that check that out. Okay so that takes me then to what's pissing me off this week. It's dirty business. What I mean by dirty business is how companies are handling themselves during this crisis. Now last week I ranted on about uh, you know, basically if a business is going to survive through this crisis, it's not going to be on how much money they make. It's going to be more or less how they treat their customer base. And I talked all about that last week. Well, I've had a couple of things happen this week that I want to talk about that just go to show what I was saying last week about the tricks that these businesses are doing. Now I want to start with the River Cruise Company. Their name is Emerald. They are a subsidiary of Scenic Tours which is based out of Australia and they're a, a big uh, tour company and Emerald is one of their River Cruise companies and that's the ones we had booked for that in the middle of May we were supposed to fly over to Amsterdam and get on this thing and go to Budapest. That was in the old world. In the new world that's not going to happen of course. And you've heard me talk about that before. So Walter's been on the phone with them. He's been sending emails the whole bit, trying to get our money back. They canceled the cruise, of course. They don't want to give you back the money. They want to give you 110% cruise credit for a future cruise, which is good up to the for the next two years. We don't want that. And I stated my reasons for that last week. So it's an ongoing fight. It looks like we're probably going to have to go to plan B. Plan B is they might give us 50% of our money back as that's part of their standard cancellation policy. Walter's already checked with our insurance company that we bought insurance for this cruise from and they say they will rec they'll cover the other 50%. But all of this takes many many pieces of, of uh, paperwork to go through and is going to take some time because if we get this 50% back from the River Cruise Company I'm anticipating that we may not see it for anywhere between a month to three months before we get that money and then we'd have to apply to the insurance company again for the other half of it and that's going to take a few months as well. So this isn't going to happen overnight but I hope it happens because it's over $19,000 I want my money back. Wouldn't you? Yeah I'm sure you would. But this is the kind of treatment that I'm talking about and what's pissing me off. Now I'm going to give you another example of this. So, in Canada, we have a chain of grocery, uh, not grocery stores, of drug stores called Shoppers Drug Mart. Um, they're almost, they're on every corner, it seems. They're, they're as bad as Tim Hortons here. There's a Tim Hortons on every corner, and on the opposite corner, there's a Shoppers Drug Mart, okay? They are owned by a very large company called Loblaws. Loblaws is a grocery store uh, retail. They own the real 
real Canadian superstore. They own, um, I think they or they own no frills, no thrills, no frills. Um, they own Loblaws, um, all of this. They are controlled by, well, or owned by a probably the richest family in Canada called the Westons. And in fact, this family is so rich, they own one of the major department stores in London, England called Selfridges. Selfridges and Harrods are the two big stores in London. We've been to Selfridges and Harrods and they're fantastic, but they're higher end stores. Um, and the Weston family, the family that owns Shoppers Drug Mart, they own Selfridges. So they're not hurting for money at all. Okay. So let's bring it back down to human level. I needed to get one of my prescriptions refilled. Now I'd heard rumors that apparently the Ontario government has suggested, they did not make it a law, they have suggested to the pharmacies across our country that instead of giving people, they should only give people one month's worth of their drugs, just so there won't be a run on the manufacturing of essential drugs. Okay. It's a suggestion. Actually, I did some more digging and found out that the suggestion actually came from the Canadian Pharmaceutical um, Organization, whatever they do, okay? Uh, it came actually from them. Okay, do we have a shortage of essential everyday drugs? I'm on two blood pressure pills and I'm on a, uh, a cholesterol drug. I've been on the cholesterol drug for mm, 20 years, probably. Um, my doctor always prescribes for me a three month supply. I go in, I get a three month supply. Actually, it's a hundred pills. Okay, a little bit more than three months. That's what I get. So I go in, I pick it up and I have to pay a dispensing charge for them to count out the pills kind of a thing and put them in a bottle. Um, actually, this one's very easy. They come in a box already. They just put three boxes into my bag and away we go. And they charge me a dispensing charge for that. Okay, that's fine. I mean, their dispensing charge is actually, um, part of it is covered in the insurance that we pay for every month uh, for this as well. So it doesn't amount to major bucks here, but I pay it once for three months supply. Now, when I go in and I went in on the weekend, I got one month supply and I paid the dispensing charge. Okay, which means that when I go back in next month to get another one month supply, I pay the dispensing charge again. And when I go in on the third month to get a one month supply, I pay for dispensing charge for that month. So I am paying three times for this prescription, whereas before I paid once. Are they reducing the dispensing charge or are they charging you the dispensing charge when you get the first month and the next two months are free? Not really free, but you know what I mean? No, they are not. I asked to speak to the manager. So I got the head pharmacist. I don't like him. I've dealt with him before. He is a cold, horrible, one word answer man. He can do only too little for you. He has the personality of an artichoke. Actually worse than an artichoke. I'd rather talk to an artichoke. I have had to deal with this guy before. Like one time they screwed up my medication and they could have killed me. If I hadn't read it a little bit more closely, because it was the same one, yeah, I could have been dead. So I went in to speak to them about this and the answer he gave me at that time, and I think I did this on a vlog once, the answer he got from me was, oops, or he got, that he gave me was this, literally, oops. And that's how he looked. Oops. What do you do with that? So anyways, I went and saw him again. Mentioned the whole concern I had with this, you know, triple billing kind of a thing, the dispensing charge. Here's the answer I got. Well, we dispense it. That's not an answer. We dispense it. No. So I said to him, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's price gouging. 
and I'm going to file a complaint with the Ontario government because the Ontario government has set up a Ba a database, a website, where you, if you suspect price gouging, you can fill out this form online and supposedly they'll look into it. I don't think they're really looking into it, if you know what I mean. Um, but it's there to appease us. But anyways, on the off chance that they might actually carry through with something they said they're going to do, then I fill it out. So I got home, I went to that form, I filled it out. And I was very detailed about the problem. Then I thought, hmm, I'm going to send a letter to Shoppers Drug Mart head office about this. Again, I'm not expecting them to actually react to any of this because they won't. They're too big. They don't care. It's as simple as that. Shoppers Drug Mart doesn't give a crap about anybody. All they care about is the bottom line, how much more money they can get in their greedy little hands. I mean, the Westons already have enough money, I think. So. I uh, wrote this letter and I'm going to read it to you. This is what I wrote. Now, to send it to them was not easy. Looking for an email address, contact information where I could send this, I finally found it. it I had to do a lot of digging on the internet, but I found it and this is what I sent to them. An open letter of complaint to Shoppers Drug Mart. Dear Shoppers Drug Mart, I am very disappointed with your service to the public during this time of crisis. I'm speaking specifically to your manner for dispensing prescription drugs. I went to my local shoppers to pick up a renewed prescription to find that I could only get a one month supply as opposed to a three month supply, which is the norm for me. I had heard that you were doing something like this because you supposedly did not want to have a run on the drugs that might cause a delay in keeping your supplies stocked. This does not upset me. What does is that for each separate renewal, I'm being charged the full dispensing fee. This means instead of paying one fee for a three month renewal, I'm now having to pay that amount three times, meaning you're making three times more money from me. Since I have several drugs to renew, again, all reduced to a one month supply, I'm paying three times the amount I would norm normally pay for the same renewals. This is price gouging for sure. Not to mention that it means I have to spend more time in your stores during a time when we're supposed to be social distancing and isolating. This I feel is very irresponsible of you and it also indicates how little you care about your customers, especially during this crisis time. I don't expect that I will hear anything from you. Again, just your general policy in terms of customer relations. But when the world gets back to something like normal, people will remember those businesses that served the public well during this crisis and those that screwed them around and show their they will show their support accordingly. I will certainly remember. P.S. I'm filing a formal price gouging complaint with the Ontario Provincial Government against your company. Okay, so I sent that off in the email and then I thought, wait, in this day and age of social media, do they have a Facebook page? And yes, they do. So, I got on their Facebook page and I copied this message into that. Now I got reactions almost immediately from various people that were also on in that Facebook page or on that Facebook page and they had had similar complaints um, and they got the same, well one got a very rude uh, answer back um, from the, the whoever they talked to at the Shoppers Drug Mart. So other people are experiencing this too. One lady, she was saying she has to pay a dispensing charge because of whatever drugs she's on of $60. That means she has to pay $180 in a three month period where before she was only paying 60 bucks. So did Shoppers Drug Mart react to this? Actually, they did on their Facebook page very quickly. And this is what they wrote. And these are canned messages. You know, that I was reading through a lot of their, when people were complaining about different aspects of their company, it's, it's all like pre-formatted -format, responses. I would even think that probably there's not a human being behind any of them. That's an algorithm that just, just automatically puts the message up. But here's the message, the response I got to my uh, message. Um, we understand that this change may present an inconvenience to our customers. However, in order to safeguard against expected drug shortages and hoarding during this unprecedented 
unprecedented time, provincial governments have decided a 30-day supply limit is necessary. Regarding the additional fees, provincial pharmacy associations continue to work with their respective governments to address the additional costs. Thank you. Okay, what's wrong with that response? One, it doesn't solve the problem. Two, it doesn't even address the problem, only in ambiguous and general terms. For example, it says, we understand that this change may present an inconvenience to our customers. An inconvenience. What about those people that have lost their jobs? Do they need this added expense? However, in order to safeguard against expected drug shortages, they're expecting drug shortages and hoarding. Why would people be hoarding? I know in at my shopper's drug mart, when I go in to renew a drug, if I come in a little too early, they will say, well, you still have 10 pills left. We can't renew that for another five days. So if I wanted to hoard the drugs, I can't. So what's this about hoarding? They already have built in a safeguard. They've always had it there that you can't hoard the drugs. And then, of course, they're blaming it on the provincial governments. Um, and, and they're saying that the provincial governments had decided a 30-day supply limit is necessary. No, they didn't. They suggested that. And that came because the Canadian Pharmaceutical Organization, Association, whatever they are, lobbied them about this. So, no, they're blaming the government for something that they're doing. And then they say regarding the additional fees, uh, their association, provincial pharmacy associations, continue to work with their res excuse me, respective governments to address the additional costs. No, they're not. They're not addressing them. They're making it sound like the government's the big uh, enemy here, and they're just doing what the go government is telling them to do. Not their fault. No, they're not. No, they're not. That is bullshit, quite frankly. So, I made a response to their response. And this is what I said. I am sorry, Shoppers Drug Mart. I am sorry, Shoppers Drug Mart, but this is not an answer. This is just you blaming the government. We need you to do the right thing. We get the supply idea, but not dispensing charges and the rudeness of your store managers. You are gouging. Simple as that. Your parent company is one of the richest in the country, and you were able to keep your doors open because you have been deemed essential. But you're taking advantage of not only government regulations, but of the average person that depends on you for life-saving drugs. This is completely unacceptable, and when the crisis is over, I will be boycotting your stores and will be promoting others to do the same. You are an embarrassment to Canadian companies who want to help where they can during this time of crisis. We will not forget. Shame on Shoppers Drug Mart and the whole Loblaws Corporation. Did I get a reply to this reply? No, I did not. You know what happened? They eliminated it. They deleted my whole letter, the whole bit, right off the site. So I decided to put it up again. As soon as I got it back up, it was gone again. So I think they've got it already programmed in their system. If they see me writing anything, it's going to disappear. So I put it on my own Facebook page. And I marked it as a public. So anybody just searching through can find it. And I've had other people react to it as well. And nobody's taking the side of Shoppers Drug Mart on this. So, yes, I will remember when this is all over. And I will certainly not be supporting Shoppers Drug Mart. Now, I have not got an official answer yet, but I wrote it on the weekend. Um, from their head office, I'm expecting I won't hear a word from them because they're just too big and we're just too little. So I'm thinking, what more can I do? Because this has really got my goat. So I'm thinking of establishing either a Facebook group or a Facebook page or something. I have to see how that works because I'm not sure yet where people can complain not just about Shoppers Drug Mart, but anywhere where they feel that a company, a business, a store is taking advantage of the average consumer during this time of crisis. And they can talk about that on the Facebook. Now, this will serve two purposes. One purpose is that this allows an outlet for people like me um, to express my concerns, to get it off my chest sort of a thing. Two, it may go bigger where companies can see, you know, like uh, people aren't happy. Maybe they should 
readjust their policies. I don't know. I, I suspect that that won't make any difference on some of these places, especially the larger corporations. However, not just a, a spot where people can complain about abuse here in price gouging, but where people can also praise companies that during this time of crisis have gone beyond and above the call of duty here, who have really protected and helped out their customer base. And we can put those in too. So at the end of all of this, people can go here and decide who they want to give their dollars to, who they want to support, and support them according to merit, according to what they have done, how they behave during this whole epidemic, pandemic situation. I'm going to see. I don't know if this, I can do this. I don't know if, you know, it's, it's going to work or not. But if anything, on a personal level, for me, it's just going to make me feel better. So, businesses, warning, we will not forget. Do you want to be on the right side of this epidemic or do you want to be on the wrong side of this? Do you want to continue having a business after this is all over or what? You decide. And that decision is going to be based upon how you treat your customer base. Okay, so I'm glad I got that off my chest. All right, moving on. Did I get anything new this week? Well, my Monfil order came in and I got all kinds of batting. And batting is not that exciting, if, especially if you're not a quilter. Um, but it's needed and I got it. And that's great. And I got some more batting from my local quilt stores as well. I figured, well, I got to go in to pick up my sewing machine. I might as well throw some business away too. So I bought a bunch of batting there as well. So I've got batting coming out of my yin yang and which means I can start quilting uh, some of these things that I've got. And that's about all that was new. Oh, I did have another little problem. My little travel iron that I use for my classes and things, which I really love, bust it. I seem to have this problem with things busting. Actually, it's still usable. It's just that there's, it has a flip up handle and the handle doesn't flip up and stay up anymore. But I really love the iron a lot. So I went back on to Amazon where I bought it and uh, I bought another one. They weren't that expensive. I think it's about 50 bucks is what it comes to. And it, I've already got it. Um, I ordered it mm, about Thursday, came Saturday, bingo. So that's great. I've got it. In the meantime, I'm in a letter writing mood. I wrote to Rowenta, the company, and I really love their product. I wasn't really writing a complaint to them. I just let them know what had happened and um, just said, you know, I really love your product so much. I bought another one. So I thought you should know. So for future product development, you know, maybe this is something you can work on. Um, so I'm not expecting anything from them. Maybe I'll like I wasn't looking for anything from them, but I thought I would let them know that this is what happened. I probably could have sent it to them for repair because um, I found on their website, uh, you know, how to do that or at least a, a link to something like that. But, you know, given how long it would probably take and whatnot, I just figured it was worth the investment. Actually, they have a really big uh, 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 an iron with a tank for steam and that, which it's a pricey item. It's like about 350 bucks uh, for that iron. And someday I would like to have that iron. But that's down the road. I'm not spending that kind of money right now, for sure. Okay, so book of the week. Here it is. Now, you probably know as a crafter, uh, Deanne uh, Reevely. She's from the UK, and of course, she has her whole line of products, delusions, uh, paint and stains and all kinds of things and stencils and whatnot and journals. And uh, her stuff is really whimsical and really nice. I have many of her products. Well, I bought this book at some point in time. I think there's a couple of books in this series uh, that basically is called Distinctly Delusional, A Guide to Art Journaling. And uh, her style is very unique. But she takes you through with a lot of pictures about doing different techniques, which I think are really cool. It's a nice book. It, it's very nice to look through the, you know, it's um, nice glossy pictures and everything of from her own art journal. And I find it really useful. And if you're getting bored with your art journal about techniques or things to do, this book's great for that. Now, 
What did I pay for it? Originally I paid, I have no idea because there isn't a price on this at all. Mm, no, no price. So I don't know what I paid for it, but I looked it up on Amazon as I always do. And on uh, Amazon.ca it's listed as $25.83 uh, Canadian and there's free shipping on it. And that's free shipping. You don't need to be a Prime member to get that. So I don't think that's an unreasonable price for a book like this. And as I said, her style is really neat. Um, she has many, many YouTube videos about how to do things uh, in her style. So I would highly recommend this book for you people who are into art journaling, especially. Okay, so that was the book of the week. Um, Oh, and what else did I do this week besides I missed this? I made this little thing. Now, my local quilt store had a free pattern that you could download for making this. And i am it's, it's just a kit bag, you know, like a cosmetic bag. And so I used, I had these tea towels that I bought on my second trip, I think, to Australia um, that I wanted, or maybe it was my first trip to Australia. Uh, bought all these tea towels that I eventually made into a quilt. I, that was when I first got into quilting. And instead of doing scrapbook pages, I decided to make a memory quilt uh, with that. But I had a lot of these tea towels left over. And they'd just been sitting on my shelf. And when I saw this project, I thought, yeah, I will make this. Well, the instructions weren't that clear and I had some problems. But I was able to figure it out on my own. Um, I know what I would do differently the next time but I've got this neat little kit bag with a zipper in it right now and I think it looks kind of cool and uh, yeah what am I going to do with it I don't know um, probably use it to uh, put in some of my sewing stuff uh, that kind of thing but anyways I did that this week too okay so that takes us to the next installment on my grimoire and here I'm showing you how I embellish pages seven and eight so I've completed pages seven and eight in the grimoire and I'm not going to take you through the process because I kept these pages pretty simple now one thing I did want to do is keep these pages fairly flat uh, less three-dimensional elements because already my grimoire is getting kind of thick when it comes to closing it and I think I've got to cut back a little bit on the 3d embellishments or I will not be able to close this book. So here's what I've done with this one. Now, I went to that wizardry book that I showed you earlier, and I scanned these two pictures, and I put them into my Cricut Maker and had the Cricut Maker cut them out. Although this one came out as almost a square, and I didn't really need to use the Cricut Maker to cut that out. I could have just gone around with a pair of scissors. In fact, that's what I did do after it printed it out. I just went and clipped around it a little bit to give it a little bit more dimension than just straight lines. This one I did have the Cricut Maker cut out as it was because I have a few more intricate curves and I don't like fussy cutting. So I'm using these like pockets. So I glued them down on three sides and left them open at the top and part way down the sides and I tucked in these little spell cards. Now I went around everything with my Walnut Stain Oxide inks uh, to give them that aged look and I found these little, they look like copper pennies um, that I just put on the top. I used my Gorilla Glue um, sort of as a, a tab and it also adds a little bit of a dimension to it. Now they are fairly flat so I'm not worried about them uh, making the book too impossible to close. Then I was looking for something else to put up along these pages just as an added element and I found this little package of butterflies that I'm not sure where I got these. I think I bought them at a dollar store um, and I just glued them on here. Now this one, you take a look, I double sided it. I took two of the same image and just glued them together so that when the book is closed this is going to hang out a little bit and as I've told you before I like that look. So I just added them and they've got a little bit of bling on them as well. That They already came that way. So I didn't have to do anything to them except just go around the edges with a little bit of uh, walnut stain distress oxide ink um, just to get rid of that uh, very stark white edge to them. So here we have this uh, page or these pages and uh, in the next segment we'll move on and do some more pages. 
and we'll carry on with the grimoire next week. I'm really enjoying doing it, you know. Uh, it's a break from doing quilting. Okay, so events in the past week. Update on my mother. She's fine. Everything is fine at her nursing home. Cross my fingers, cross my toes, cross everything that's crossable. Pray to God. Everything. No cases of COVID in her nursing home. It seems like every nursing home you hear on the news has had cases. And once they get a case in there, it just wipes out the nursing home. We have had, they're saying that about half of the deaths we've had in Ontario right now from the COVID uh, virus is in nursing homes. Because it, when it hits the elderly, it just, it basically kills them. So thank goodness the nursing home my mother's in has been so good at, you know, looking after the situation and they have had 14 uh, residents test it and they all came back negative, which is great. Um, my mother sounded really with it uh, when I talked to her yesterday on the phone, which was good, makes me feel better. Um, I think she's starting to settle into this new way of life as well as we all are having to do. And so everything is fine there. Um, I already talked a little bit about the river cruise update. So we're now trying to get at least 50% of our money back from them. Moving on. Um, Walter did an online class. He was doing a shirt making class just before the whole pandemic thing. And of course the classes have been canceled. He had two classes in it. So the guy who's running it decided to do it virtually. And he had everybody in the class connect via Zoom. Zoom is, they've got to be making lots of money on that because you hear everybody is doing Zoom these days. And it is a great product. The only thing I've got against Zoom is the fact that their freebie version only allows you 40 minutes. So if you're doing something like an online class or something, you need to go to the next level, which is a monthly subscription. And it's not all that much money for a monthly subscription, but I can't justify it for what I do to be spending about $30 every month uh, for that kind of thing. But anyways, that's how they did the online class. And so Walter's busy making his shirt. Showed me the other day, he's got a sleeve on now. Um, there was a lot of cursing and swearing coming out of his uh, sewing room uh, last night while I was in bed reading. Um, when I hear that, I just quietly say nothing because heads are gonna roll and whatever heads are nearest to him at that point in time. And that would be mine. So I would like to keep my head. So I don't say anything. So I'll ask him today if he figured out whatever the problem was he was having with it. But anyways, he's doing that. So that's good. Um, we had a virtual guild meeting. Actually, it was on this, at the same time as Walter was upstairs in his sewing room with his class online. And I'm downstairs with my guild meeting in my craft room. So, but I was a little worried that maybe that would uh, stretch our bandwidth a little bit, you know, overtax it, but it didn't. Um, so that was all fine and dandy and the virtual guild meeting worked out pretty good. Um, so that's how we're doing future guild meetings until whatever time that this thing is all over with, that we can all get back together again. We'll see how that works out. Um, and of course I told you I got my sewing machine back. So that was the highlight of my week. I got my sewing machine back. So great. So what's coming up? Well, I'm going to do an online course with a guy called Peter. Now I'm not going to say his name right. His last name is, I think it's either, I think it might be Brian, B-Y-R-N-E. Anyways, this guy is a phenomenal quilter. He has won many, many major awards for his quilts. Um, he does some really cool modern style quilts as well. And he is offering free of charge on an online course with one of his quilts. So I have signed up for that. I think the first part of that starts on Thursday. I think he's going to go over what we need to do this quilt. He's saying that we don't need anything special, that we probably already have everything we need. So that's good because can't really get out to the fabric stores right now. So I'm hoping it uses a lot of what I call scraps so I can you know, use up my scraps from my stash. I mean, that was all scraps. Um, but I'm kind of looking forward to it because it's a really different kind of technique. And I'll let you in on what how this goes and what I'm working on when I get started on it because that's about all I can tell you right now because I don't know a heck of a lot more. Okay, so. Final note, 
before I sign off today. I know this is becoming something that is like a, a broken record. It goes in one ear and out the other now, but stay at home. But it doesn't seem to be sticking with some people. Over this past weekend, I guess the weather out in British Columbia was really nice and they were all congregating again at the beach. Um, people in Toronto are still congregating in parks and things like that. In the United States, in the state of Michigan, which borders onto our country here, they're protesting the stay-at-home business from the governor. They want the borders open back up. They, want, they think it is against their civil liberties. I only have one thing to say to people like that. Well, two. One, you're stupid. Okay? And the other thing is, stay home so you will not be a murderer. Go out and kill people. Because that's what's happening with this whole disease. And I don't understate it. So, stay in. Yes, Yes, we're all getting cabin fever from this. Yes, we want this thing to be over as soon as possible. Yes, we want to have life again. That's the norm, what we were used to. But no, short-term suffering for long-term gain. It's only been a little over a month, people. And that's here in our country. In the United States, it's been less than that. Wine, 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 wine. Oh, I can't go. I couldn't see my grandbabies. Oh, I could use FaceTime. Use Skype. Use Zoom. Everybody's got a computer. Okay? Or an iPad. Or a phone. Whatever. Okay? Do you want to kill your children? Some of them are even complaining that our Prime Minister took... Easter weekend off, two days off on Easter weekend, took the Sunday and the Monday, to go see his family, who are in his cottage, as the, the reporters are calling it. Um, that's where his family is living. He's given a clean bill of health, so have they. Okay? Saying, well, if he's allowed to do that, we should all be allowed to do that. He's working 24-7 for our country. Cut the man some slack. Okay, and I'm sure he wasn't doing it on a whim. All right, he knows who he represents. He knows what he has to do to set an example. He's not a stupid man. So wine, 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 wine. And all I say to people like that who think that their civil, civil liberties are being um undermined it, who think it is their right to go out there and spread this disease, I say to you, shut up. Stay in, stay home, stay safe, and keep the rest of us safe too. So we, when we come out of this, we come out of this alive. Think about it. Okay. I hope you have a good week. I hope you're not getting too much cabin fever. Um, and I hope you're finding things to keep you amused and to keep you going. Have a good one. We'll see you for Stephen and Walter live next Sunday. And bye for now.